wanted to do another video about interstitial cystitis because ever since I made the first video about it, I've gotten tons and tons of um, requests to make another one and lots of follow-up questions and people messaging me on Instagram and YouTube. And I feel you, like I, I get it. Like I know that you need, um, if you're in it and you're suffering from interstitial cystitis, especially if you are in the way that I was and I was like in horrific pain, like hospital visits, like just having like the worst, most darkest thoughts um, ever. Like I get it. Like I know where you are. I can relate. And it's really an awful place to be. And you're just, you're desperate for information that's going to help you get out of this misery and hell that you're in. I totally get it. So I wanted to make another video and talk a little bit more about specifically what I believe helped me recover from IC. The the one thing that I didn't really talk about in the last video was um, stress and interstitial cystitis and how stress can definitely contribute to it. And it's exactly the same way in which stress affects anything regarding your health, whether it's your physical health, your mental health, whatever it is. When you throw stress into the mix, it's going to create sickness in your body. And if you're dealing with something like interstitial cystitis, it's going to exacerbate that condition. And also there is um, an emotional element to pain that I think a lot of times just isn't discussed for whatever reason because it's it's difficult to really measure. When you're dealing with chronic illness and chronic pain, there's such an emotional side to it. There's so much fear surrounding that pain and um, fears, fear about the pain coming back, about the pain never leaving. And you can get into this really, really super dark place psychologically. And it's really important. It's so essential. It's just as important to address that psychological side of the pain and misery as it is to address the physical symptoms with, you know, food or whatever it is that you're modifying. Um, so the way in which I dealt with that stress was I dedicated myself to an everyday yoga practice. And I, I've always done yoga and I was practicing yoga at the time that I um, began to experience interstitial cystitis, but I didn't have a regular practice. I wasn't dedicated to it. Um, it was just something that it was like a here and there kind of thing because I was super busy and stressed out. I had two babies. Um, you know, my kids are only 16 months apart and I was just, I was doing that. I was in a relationship that was not good. It was not a good relationship. Um, it was something that I think somewhere deep down in me, I knew had to come to an end at some point. So there was that stress factor. Um, I was parenting, although I had like a uh, someone to help me care for the house and um, watch the kids if I really needed to. I was essentially parenting um, by myself, um, both doing the physical tasks and also going through the emotions of parenting alone, which is, I don't, I don't know how to explain that if you're not a parent, but you don't really have someone to share stuff with. So anyway, so there was that. And, it, and then I decided, okay, like I need to, um, dedicate myself to yoga. And so what I did was I just was like, I'm going to practice yoga every single day, no matter what, no matter if what I have to do, like if the baby's in the room with me, if I have to do it, you know, while they're taking a 15 minute nap, whatever it is, like it's going to happen. I'm going to make this commitment to myself. So I don't know what that uh, tool is for you in dealing with stress. For me, it was yoga. Maybe for you, it's something else. Maybe it's you dedicate yourself to beginning a meditation practice. Maybe you take 10 minutes every day to meditate no matter what. Um, maybe it's going for a walk every day. For me, walking was really hard and it was really painful because I was dealing with that interstitial cystitis. For me, getting on my yoga mat um, was a little bit easier when I was in the throes of the, the pain of it. Um, so whatever it is that you need to do to deal with that psychological side of chronic pain, you need to do that. Okay. So aside from that, the things that you need to do, and I, I've mentioned in the other video that the medical medium, if you're not familiar with the medical medium, I don't care if you think it's bullshit that he hears the voice of spirit or not. 
he's got some things that are going to help you get over this. that are going to help you heal from it. He says that interstitial cystitis is from strep bacteria. I do believe that to be true. Um, one of the reasons I believe that to be true is because I was diagnosed with group B strep when I was pregnant with haze. And that is when I started experiencing the symptoms of interstitial cystitis. And when Hayes was born, she has had IC symptoms from day one. From the very first time that she could verbalize, she was having um, the same symptoms as me. And his protocols for ridding the body of strep have really helped her. So I was able to overcome my IC long before I ever heard of medical medium. And I believe it's because I was dedicated myself to a yoga practice and also that I switched to a diet of whole plant foods, which is essentially what he recommends. I mean, there are certain herbs that he also recommends, but I switched to whole plant foods. And, um, one of the things that I noticed specifically, I will mention some foods that bothered my IC and I'll mention some foods that helped it. And <laughs> these are all things that I figured out on my own because nobody knew jack shit about this condition when I was dealing with it like 12 years ago. Um, so the things that I figured out happen to be the same things that the medical medium says bother it. So the things that bothered me were, um, well, coffee, you, you got to get rid of coffee if you're dealing with interstitial cystitis. No caffeine for you. Um, chocolate was a big one. Um, alcohol was a big one. Um, eggs were not good. Uh, and just basically any kind of like junk food always aggravated it. I, I ate a very clean or quote unquote what I believe to be a healthy diet, which was largely plant-based, but I still ate quite a bit of processed foods like chips and stuff like that. Um, corn, which were made of corn. And then I also, um, was still eating fish like maybe once or twice a week and I was eating eggs. Um, but I was still eating like lots of fruits and I would make salads and I was eating lots of whole grains and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that I had a really healthy diet. So I, I was kind of managing symptoms, but I would always feel it around ovulation. So whenever I would ovulate every month, I would get the interstitial cystitis symptoms. And then if I was going through a particularly stressful time, or if I was dealing with some order, other sort of physical issue, like if I was fighting a cold or a flu or something like that, um, I would, the symptoms would intensify. It wasn't until I switched to a completely um, vegan diet where I was eating whole plant foods and I eliminated oils and I was including like lots of really super healthy foods like you know, smoothies with lots of fruit um, and greens. And it wasn't really until I did that whole whole plant foods <laughs> that I that my symptoms really did leave me Um so I was eating that way, but my daughter was not. She was still eating certain things um, like, you know, she would eat chocolate with her dad here and there. And like she would have fish and eggs and she ate animal products and all that stuff. And so she hadn't gotten rid of her symptoms. We just kind of managed them as they came up. And then it wasn't until, um, it was a couple years ago that medical medium was doing a live and I just jumped on and I was like, what's up with interstitial cystitis? And he was like, okay, it's the strep bacteria. So I researched everything he said about strep, um, and followed those rules for my daughter. So we did the celery juicing in the morning. So she went through a couple bouts. I know this is a really rambling video. I'm sorry. There's just a lot of information and stuff that I have to say about it. And I just am trying to like bleh, get it out there and it's not coming out in a very organized fashion. And I do apologize for that. But <laughs> so she would have um, really bad bouts of it. There was one summer that she spent a lot of time. We, we were living in the same house with dad. So there was a lot of junk food around. So she was eating a lot of junk food, a lot of chocolate, um, a lot of fried foods and processed foods and stuff like that. And she was so miserable with one migraines and two interstitial cystitis symptoms. So there were times, there was times where I had to pick her up all the way across town at one in the morning because she was so doubled over in pain. And like, we would have to give her a warm bath. So warm, if you are having like an acute attack of, of IC where you're like, like, and it's that sort of pain, 
get yourself in like a nice warm bathtub that really does um, kind of alleviate the acute sort of attack of it. So this is what we did for her. Um, we, we did the celery juicing in the morning, which helped. So 16 ounces, she didn't do 16 ounces because she's a little gosh, about eight ounces of celery juice on an empty stomach every single morning before you even have water. Wait about 20 minutes and then you can eat. So she was doing that. I was religiously giving her cat's claw. So I get the, um, the liquid form of cat's claw and we do that. Um, really helpful. I found, and I discovered this before the medical medium was bitter greens. So eating lots of, um, things like arugula, things like, uh, kale arugula is a really good one. When I ate a lot of arugula, like it just, I don't know, I didn't have the symptoms. So bitter greens. It's also keeping your fat relatively low seemed to be helpful whenever I would kind of go off and be like, Oh, you know, I'm going to make cookies or whatever. And it's cool. Cause I eat really, I, I kind of like get those symptoms. So, um, lots of bitter greens, have your, take your cat's claw, um, zinc, I find a good zinc liquid zinc supplement. That is really important. Um, don't eat eggs. <laughs> don't eat chocolate. Um, supposedly soy and corn are pretty bothersome as well. I never really ate tons of those things. So I, I, I can't say from personal experience, but supposedly, so I would look into the medical medium and find out what he recommends to rid the body of strep. So go into that in detail. And I've had a lot of questions from people that aren't vegan and are suffering with interstitial cystitis. And I've gotten the question several times, like, can I just be vegan while I get rid of this and then go back to my uh, regular style of eating? And my perfectly honest answer to that is I really don't know. Um, I know this though, that it is really hard to completely eradicate your body of the strep. And I do still think that I probably still have it somewhere in me and that it's not completely gone because, um, when was it? It was, oh, just a few months ago when I was going through a kind of the stressful end of a relationship with this fucking jerk off I dated for six months. I was going to say, I feel kind of bad for calling him a jerk off, but he really was. He was a fucking asshole in the end there. So that's a totally different subject. But anyway, so I was dealing with that and I felt tinges of interstitial cystitis pain. So that tells me that it's still in there somewhere. And if I was just to go off the rails and like go back to eating like a shit diet and stuff and not taking care of my stress levels that tells me that I would still have it. So I would venture to guess that, um, <laughs> just going vegan for a certain period of time and taking care of yourself for a certain period of time, then going back to those foods, um, probably is not going to work. Um, and I'll also add, why the fuck would you want to, why would you want to switch to a completely healthful diet? That's far superior than the one that you're eating now and helps to save the planet and doesn't harm animals. Why would you want to go back to that? Listen, if you're not vegan and you're dealing with pain, like if you're dealing with the level of pain that I was dealing with, there's nothing I would have fucking try. Like if I, I mean, I don't know, like maybe your symptoms aren't as bad as mine, but like there's no fucking way I'm going to do anything to jeopardize my health and have me be back in that dark ass place that I was in when I was dealing with all that pain. So, um, yeah, I probably would just stick with it. <laughs> um, but yeah, someone asked me particularly about eggs and eggs are supposed to be horrific in terms of, um, feeding that strep bacteria. So the eggs are really supposed to be like one of the worst, most aggravating foods. So if you're looking to switch your diet up to change to, if you're looking to switch your diet up to help this health condition, that's where you want to start is you want to get rid of eggs, um, and chocolate. Sorry. I know chocolate's so yummy, but anyway, so, um, if you have any other questions about interstitial cystitis and how I got rid of it. If I left anything out, please ask down below and, 
And I'll try to answer these questions even if it's like a year from now or a month from now that you find this video and you're watching it. I'll, I'll still come back to it and answer the questions because I totally understand that desperate place that you're in. I get how miserable it is. And I just want you to know that I really do believe that you can heal from this. I don't think that you're going to feel like this forever. I don't think you're going to be in this place forever. You have the tools now. You know what to do. You know the changes to make. Start making those changes and you got to let go of the attachment to that like, oh my God, the pain or is it going to go away? I have one girl that continuously messages me and asks me, well, how long is it going to take to go away? I'm really worried. And sex is really aggravating the situation. And what if I did? It's just like, you need to not just address the physical, you need to address your emotional stress. So you need to find a tool for that meditation, yoga, some kind of gentle movement, you got to do something to address that end of it because you sitting there freaking out going, well, what is this? If I, if I do this, if I, how long is it? You need to stop. You just do the things that you're supposed to do and let it go. That's the only way you got to chill. you got to find a way to chill. So that's my advice. But anyway, leave any questions, any comments. If you guys suffered from interstitial cystitis and you healed from it, please leave some advice down in the comments. You remember what it's like to be there. It's awful. It fucking sucks. And um, we're here for you. You're going to get better. I just, I just really know that you are. Okay. I'll see you guys soon. Mwah.